The first reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And then he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own camel, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Our second chapter reading is from Samuel 9, verses 1 to 7. David's kindness to Mephibosheth. David asked, Is there still anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and he was summoned to David. The king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. The king said, Is there anyone remaining in the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Ziba said to the king, There remains a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. The king said to him, Where is he? Ziba said to the king, He is in the house of Machir son of Amiel, at Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, son of Amiel, at Lodibar. Mepis Bosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. David said to Mepis Bosheth, He answered, I am your servant. David said to him, Do not be afraid, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table always. We are going to be talking today about the biblical concept of kindness. And kindness is far more than just being nice in scripture. We will unpack that as time goes on. But let me begin with the that this for today. And that that this is really simple. It's that the most telling fruit, most telling sign of the Holy Spirit at work in your life or mine is whether we are kind to others. And second, perhaps the most basic entry level straightforward and simple tool that we have for sharing the light of Christ with others is to be kind to them. Our story today is about David 
and met people says, Let me give you the story. If we remember that Jonathan was Saul's son, and David and Jonathan became best friends, their soul were knit together, the scripture says. Then David escaped from the house of Saul, and Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth. When Mephibosheth was five years old, his father Jonathan and his grandfather Saul were killed in battle at Mount Gilboa. And when the nanny, the nurse, heard that Saul and Jonathan had been killed, she picked up five years old Mephibosheth and began to flee the armies of David that were coming to the camp. And while she was running, she dropped Mephibosheth. His legs were broken, so he was never able to walk again. As the as the years go by and David becomes king, he looks for Mephibosheth. He finds him and he invites him into his house. He restores to him all of the land that would have been his father's. His father's, he invites him to sit at his table and he treats him as a part of the family. The scripture says, he showed kindness to Mephibosheth says on account of Jonathan. What can we learn from this story about how we show kindness? There are just two verses that are so powerful. The first is verse 1. Is there anyone left of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Then in verse 3, it says, are there remaining of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? There are three things I want you to see here, and this is the first one. David showed kindness to Mephibosheth in order to pay it forward. Listen to the scripture. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for the Jonathan's sake? It was because Jonathan had interceded for David three times with his father, had saved his life three times. He couldn't pay it back because Jonathan was dead. So he had to look for some way to pay it forward. I have really enjoyed this concept of paying it forward. I am not a lawyer, but as far as I understand, it's like what's called third-party beneficiary contract. So that if I enter into a contract with someone to lend you money, the third-party beneficiary contract says that you can then pay that money to somebody else instead of back to me, while lending it to somebody else instead of paying it back to me. So the money keeps moving forward through the economy to make a difference. We continue to want to pay it forward to someone other than the one who has given it to us. Laura Zimmerman was in Portugal, maybe 25 years ago. And then she was traveling there with her husband. They decided on the last day of their trip, they were to leave the next day to fly back to New York to go to a national park. They had been warned that there were pickpockets in the area. So they took all their valuables, their plane tickets, their passports, a bottle of wine, all of their money, and they put it all in the Ed Bauer bag and put that in the trunk of their rental car. And off they went on their hiking. Well, when they came back, their car had been broken into. And then their Ed Bauer bag was gone with everything missing. In those days, you had to have a paper ticket, and they didn't have their passport. So they called the embassy, and it was a holiday. So the embassy was closed, and they didn't know what to do. The next morning, they just got up and they drove to the airport. And they went to the airline desk. 
They said, we are just going to plead our case and see if we can talk our way on to see if there is anything they can do. So they get there and they talking to the agent and the agent said, wait, I think we have your tickets. She called the security guard and security guard comes walking down the terminal with this Ed Bauer bag. It turns out that some woman was hunting mushrooms in the park and she ran across the bag. The money was gone, the wine was gone, but passport was there and the tickets were there. She didn't know what to do. So she looked at the tickets and saw that they were for New York City the very next day. That night she drove the three hour to the airport to turn in this bag so that maybe, just maybe, the people would come and be able to fly home. Laura Zimmerman said she cried all the way home on the plane back to New York. They tried to find the woman and ultimately they find her. And they tried to speak on the phone. But she didn't speak English and the Jimoman speak didn't speak Portuguese. So they never really communicate well. But here is the point I'm trying to make. Lola Jumoman said that from that day forward, she always looked to find if there is or there was someone that she could go out of her way and do more than was easy to pay that kindness forward. What a great story. We don't share with others, so we will get something back. We share with others because someone has been kind to us. Therefore, evangelical families, we pay it forward and pray that it continues to spread. David put it this way, is there anyone to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Here is third thing. Here is the second thing. David showed Mephibosheth's kindness, even though maybe because he was a rival. Now listen, maybe sometimes you miss this point. He said, is there anyone left from the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness? The house of David and the house of Saul are political parties. For lack of a better word, they are people who are loyal to Saul and there are people who are loyal to David. And as the battle went on, the house of Saul fell and the house of David was raged, David ultimately becomes king. But recognize if in fact, people turn against David. The new king from the house of Saul would be whom? Yes, Mephibosheth. He was the next in line. Saul and Jonathan were dead. Mephibosheth could be king. So David showed kindness to someone who is a rival. Let me be straightforward about this. If you are a strict conservative, is there any committed liberal to whom you can show kindness? Just because of the rivalry? If you are a committed liberal, are there any conservatives to whom you can show kindness? If you are a Toronto Maple Leafs or a Toronto Raptors, is there anyone who cheers for the Ottawa Senators or Brooklyn Nets to whom you can show kindness? If you are a Boston Red Sox, is there anyone from New York to whom you can show kindness? I don't know, whatever the rivals are. Let me go deeper. If you are a Canadian, 
Is there anyone from another country to whom you can show kindness? The picture is that it is easy for us to be kind to people who are on our side or who are on our team. But how do we show kindness to people who are not on our team, who are not followers of Jesus? How can we be especially kind to those folks? The Good Samaritan is a marvelous story. And the Samaritans and Jews, as you know, hated one another. But when the Jew is trapped and broken down on the side of the road and had been mugged by robbers, the other Jews just passed him by. But not the Samaritan. He showed kindness to him despite the differences. We can go a long way to showing kindness. David showed kindness to Mephibosheth, maybe because he was a rival. Here is the third thing, and it is probably the most important thing. What David showed Mephibosheth was not his own kindness, particularly, but the kindness of God. He said, Is there anyone remaining of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Now look, this is perhaps the most important word. That word that is translated kindness, there is the Old Testament, 250 times it is used. It's almost always used as a characteristic of God. The word is hesed. And it is translated loving kindness. It's sometimes translated steadfast love. And it's so much deeper than just being nice. It includes... For example, speaking the truth in love. It is the basic character of God. Michael Card is a great musician, a Christian artist. He's written maybe 33 albums and 22 books. He's a great theologian in many ways. For those of you who know contemporary Christian music, he wrote El Shaddai, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, and Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. There are thirds of staples of contemporary Christian music. He wrote a book called Inexpressible, Hesed, and the Mystery of God's Loving Kindness. And it's all about this word, Hesed, and what it means, and where you see it in scripture. Let me read it to you what he writes, because I think he says it so well. Here is what he says. The loving kindness of God is what makes the Hebrew Christian God distinctive. What set the God of Israel apart then? What made him completely unique to the point that the other goddess were no goddess at all? is what still set him apart today. He is the God who delights in being kind, in loving his creation, in offering forgiveness and salvation to those who have no right to expect anything from him. The great surprise of the Hebrew Bible is not that God is awesome or holy. These characteristics we would expect from God. The great surprise is that he is kind, that he is a God of Hesed. This is what fundamentally makes him unlike any other God than one now. His kindness is who God is. Moses is on the mountain and they've had the golden calf debacle down at the bottom of the mountain and the tablets of stone have been broken. Then Moses goes back up on the mountain to receive the second set of tablets. And when he's up there, he passes in front of him and God himself declares the character of God. Here is what he says. The Lord, a God merciful and gracious, 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, has said, and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love, has said, for the thousandth generation. My goodness, this picture of God's kindness. We are kind because God is kind. And Jesus is the embodiment of that has said. And he says that this has said which God extended to Israel is now through Christ open to everyone. Everyone is to experience that incredible kindness, that steadfast love, that covenant love of God. That's who Jesus was. To extend that has said, we sing the children's song, Jesus' hands were kind hands. We seek to live and love like Jesus. That means we are to be kind to others. Now, sometimes people will say, so if I'm really going to share the light of Christ through kindness, don't I need to tell them it's because I'm a Christian, that it's because I love Jesus? And don't I need to tell them I'm passing on the kindness of God? Doesn't that have to be my witness? Well, I would say that it's a wonderful thing if you have the appropriate opportunity to share with people that God has been so kind to you and that God has, has said for them too. That's so important. But recognize that the point here is not that we are sharing this kindness so that they will, they will necessarily come into a relationship with Christ. We will let God take care of that part. We are sharing this kindness because, because God has shared with us. We are compelled to share it with others. To pass it on, to pay for it, then we will let God worry about that. We share not our own kindness. One of my favorite passages in Matthew chapter 9, where Jesus sees the crowds and he says, He had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. So he sends the disciples out. It wasn't their compassion that drove them out. It was Jesus' compassion that drove them out. We take the hesed of God and we share it with others. Here is the phrase. Is there anyone to whom I may show kindness? Walk down the street, look in your life. Is there anyone in there to whom you can show the kindness of God? If you so, give it a try. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we confess to you that we are not always kind. But when we open ourselves, up to experience your amazing kindness, your amazing steadfast love for us. We realize that we can pass that on to others, that we can share the light of kindness to those with whom we agree, but to those with whom we disagree, with those we know and with those we don't. We can pass that on so that they too would know what an amazing kind God you are. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.